Any questions you got, ask them and you can help you out. Okay, cool. Is this your first camper? It is. Oh, that's exciting. We, tent, we normally tent camp. I got you. Cool. We'll start inside, so if you want to hop up in there, we'll start yep. in there, work our way out and around out here. Right. Yeah, just like with this. Don't mind if I record this, Not do you? Not at all. Yeah, no, no problem. The way we can refer to it later. We'll start over here at this main control panel. You're going to use this quite a bit. This gives you your gauge for your holding tanks on board and your battery. So with this panel here, yep, it's motion activated. At the very top, it gives us our tank level. So it shows us our gauge right here. You got empty one thirds, two thirds, and full as far as the tank gauges. And then they're labeled up top. You got fresh, black, and gray, and they're all rehabbed to you right now. So fresh is your portable drinking water. If you want to bring water with you to your campsite or wherever you're going, you can fill that tank. Black's your sewage uh, for your toilet waste, and then gray is your waste sink water and shower water. So not quite sewage, but your waste water. And then over here it shows us your battery gauge is reading full and charged. We're plugged into shore power just like you would be at a campsite right now, so we have full power. So anytime you're plugged into shore power at a campsite, it's charging the battery on the trailer constantly. Anytime you're driving, your vehicle should be charging the trailer battery through that seven-way connection on the back of the vehicle off the alternator. And then if you're not plugged in, you're not charging off your vehicle, you've got the solar, which is constantly charging the battery, keeping it up. So you should really never be dealing with a low battery or dead battery on this. You've got your awning light switch here that's on right now. We can turn it off. You can see over my head here, it went dark. But that's your awning light outside. You got your step light, which is down here on the ground next to the door. Cool. And then you got your interior light switch here, does your ceiling lights. Now all these are individual too. There's a button in the center of each light. You can turn them on and off. You don't want them on. Right here you've got your Bluetooth connect button. It does give you the QR code here you can open on your phone, download the app it takes you to, and then yeah, by hitting the Bluetooth button it's just going to let you pair up to it and it will allow you to do all this stuff right off your phone, which is cool. Water heater switches here and they're labeled electric or gas. So the first one says water heater, shows your little flame symbol there. So if we want to light your water heater on propane, all we have to do is hit that button there, make sure your propane's turned on up front and it automatically ignites. It takes about 15, 20 minutes to get hot. So right now it's winterized. I'm not gonna let it run too long, but I'll uh, just make sure it fires up here. Should hear it. There it goes. Yep, just lit. Yeah, so that's, that's water heater on propane, but you also have it on electric. So if you're plugged into electricity somewhere, save your propane for other stuff and just run it on electric. Yeah, I was wondering about that because I've been hearing that on a lot of the YouTube channels. Mm -hmm. And you can run both at the same time. So let's say you guys got to a campsite and you know you're going to need hot water right away to do a shower or wash some dishes or whatever. You can run both elements at the same time. It'll recover a little faster. So you're just using both elements to heat up the tank a little quicker. It doesn't hurt anything. Water pump switch here. So if you put water into that fresh water tank, you have to run the water pump and pump it up from that tank. Okay, so it's an on-demand 12 volt pump, which means you can run it all the time. You don't have to turn it on and off. Um, it's automatic, so when you turn the sink on, the pump runs to pump up the water. When you shut the sink off, the pump automatically quits. The only way you could hurt this water pump is if you ran completely out of fresh water. If you completely drained your fresh water supply, you left the pump running, the pump would run constantly trying to pump up the non-existent water and burn itself out. So it would take a while to do that. Hopefully you'd hear it and catch it before it did any damage. It would take hours. Um, just be aware if you're getting low on water, shut it off. If you're hooked up to a hose at a campsite, you do not need to run this pump because now you're using their water pressure right. from the spigot. So this would only be if you were pumping water from that tank out in the middle of nowhere or whatever. And then tank heater switch, you have 12 volt heat pads on your holding tanks to prevent them from freezing. So if you're going to do some early spring or late fall camping, you can hit that switch. And again, it's just 12 volt heat pads off the battery to keep those tanks from getting too cold. Not sufficient for winter though? Yeah, I mean, winter camping is intense. You got to do like a lot. Yeah. Start the trailer, heated water hose, you know, it's a lot. You got to keep the heat on constantly, water heater on constantly. It's a lot involved with that. Uh, but it's not, it's not doable, but it's, it's a lot. 
but it would help for that big time. You know, yeah. if you, you know that with, with a combination of other things, you probably could do some winter camping with this. And then power awning switch here. So retract and extend. I've got it halfway out right now. We can continue running it out. All I have to do is hold the extend button down. If I stop, it stops. So all you got to do is let go of the button if you don't want to run it out all the way. But when you're running it out all the way, what we're looking for is there's going to be a flap that starts dropping down from that awning roll way out there. You should see it here in a second. I might have to bring it back in. It probably stuck. We should see a flap drop down there. There we go. And we want that hanging straight up and down with the ground just like that. That's a comfortable, fully extended position. Another thing you can always check for is just to reach up here and you want this to have some flexibility. Okay, if you can easily flex this, that's a good sign. That means that if a gust of wind comes, this thing is gonna have some room to flex around instead of just ripping or breaking, something like that. If I hold extend down any longer, what happens is that flap fills up and around is fine you're not going to break the awning doing that but now this is a lot more taut i don't have nearly as much flexibility here so you can see if you got a good gust of wind you know there's not enough room for it to flex it might just damage the awning um and this thing is a giant sail so with how easy it is to operate if you're going to leave the trailer for the day roll it in you know if you're going to go on a hike or something you don't know what the weather's going to be like roll it in the last thing you want is to leave and come back to a broken awning laying on the ground so even with mine like when i go to bed at night i roll it in i don't risk it these are the number one insurance claim on campers just because of how easy they are to damage. But you know, you guys know your tents. That's really the only maintenance on an awning. Just don't store it wet. You know, if right. it gets wet, you don't want to roll it up wet and store it because it'll get moldy and mildewy and yeah. smelly. Just and all put that. it back so, out in the sun. Exactly. Let it dry and then store it dry. So, and then you've got your slide switch here in and out for your slide out. So if we want to bring the slide in, all I have to do is hold the button in. Now the awning and the slide out both run off of the battery on the trailer, so you can run them in and out at a truck stop or in a parking lot. You don't need to be plugged in to operate them. Now with the slide out, I do recommend always bringing it all the way in and all the way out. Don't stop it halfway. This slide out system has two motors, one on each side, so if you do a lot of stop and going with it, it can throw it out of alignment. And that's it, that's all the way in. So you might still be able to weasel yeah. it, use the bathroom and all that, which is cool. You run it out, so you can just hold the button out. Now obviously when you park this in a campsite or a driveway or a parking lot, make sure you give yourself ample room on that side to run the slide on right. A lot of people forget it when they gotta remove the trailer again. That'd be silly. Down here's your GFI. This is tied into a few other outlets in the trailer. So any other power outlet with this GFCI sticker means it's on this circuit. <laughs> so if you go to plug something in outside here or in the bathroom, it's not working, come here, hit the reset. You probably blew the GFI. If not, I'll show you where the breakers are. You just flip the breaker back on. You got your step light down here. This is a heat vent, so the furnace is on, hot air is going to come out of there. Right here is your power inverter switch. So the power inverter takes your 12 volt battery power and inverts it to AC power so that it can feed these outlets. Uh, so if you were going to do some boondocking where you don't have electricity, all you'd have to do is come down here, hold the power button down for a couple seconds, the display lights up. Now the inverter is on and live. Uh, the inverter display is pretty nice, shows you amp draw and how much power is coming in and you know, all that, how much you're using, I mean, what your voltage is at and all that. Uh, but now if I were to go outside and unplug us from shore power, this circuit would still be live. So you'd be able to run a coffee maker, or charge your laptop, whatever. Is it a sine wave inverter? Not sure. Um, we could pull that drawer out. I can see if I can get a good look at it. Let's turn it off. Just hold the power button down. Shut off. Yeah, the inverter is going to be right in there if you can see it let me get my flashlight out here there's your inverter yep uh 1800 watt pure sine wave inverter okay. uh, with code wfc oh, that's a nice one. and then while we're in here this is also access to water pump and water heater so for um, spring and fall access to your bypass valve this is where you're gonna have to get these this drawer is pretty easy to pull out there's two tabs it slides right off the guides it gets you easier access in there but on the pump, there's a valve um, for winterization. Mm -hmm. So when we winterize these, um, we put antifreeze in all of the plumbing lines, but not the tanks and not the water heater. So only in the plumbing lines themselves. Yeah. Um, and that's why they give you these valves here. So in the spring, when you go to use this, all you're gonna have to do is hook a hose up to it, with fresh water, turn it on, come in here, turn on your sink, run that till you don't see any pink coming out anymore. Do your toilet, do your shower, make sure you don't see any antifreeze. It's just clean water coming out. Once you've done all that and every plumbing orifice in here has water coming out of it, then you can reach in here and turn these valves. So the valves that are in here, they all only turn one way. So you can't screw it up. 
but you just have to reach in there and there, I think there's three valves total. You just turn all three of those the opposite way they are now. <laughs> and that's gonna allow water to start flowing into your water heater and start filling it. And then on the outside, I'll show you what you have to do outside. There's a drain plug you have to put in and you have to burp it and you're done. So yep. pretty straightforward for dewinterizing. Winterizing, kind of the same thing. You're just uh, opposite. So there's a winterized port on the outside. And in here, one of these valves off of your water pump allows the water pump to either suck from the fresh water tank like it normally would in the summer, or when you flip that valve, now it's sucking from a port on the outside where you can suck antifreeze right into mm -hmm. the system. So you'd come in here, flip the water pump valve up like the way it is now, then you could go outside, draw antifreeze right into the pump, you'd come in here, turn on the water pump, turn on your sink, you'd start seeing antifreeze coming in. Uh, that's pretty much winterizing and bypassing the water heater and draining that. So. But I'll show you outside what you have to do with the water heater, it's pretty easy. But that's how you're going to get to those valves. TV's on, TV's a 12 volt TV, so it runs right off your battery on the trailer, which is awesome. It does pull out the swivel. So you grab it here and angle it however you want to. You're sitting over there. Yes. If you look back here on the back side, this is your travel lock. So you see where my finger's sitting there? There's this nub right here. So when you push it in, you just got to give it a nice firm push and it, I lock it, in. it clicks into place. Uh, but up here they give you extra power outlet, you got your connections here, cable input, 12 volt power, and then this does come off so you can see this plate and this plate, it just pops right off and you can carry it outside and mount it outside if you wanted to do that. Did it have to mount outside already? Yeah, I believe so on this one. Uh, no, it doesn't. They do sell that triangular mount and through our parts department, you can get it and you can mount one out there. I don't know if we'll ever do that. Yeah, most people don't. That's that little push, and you can see now it's locked in, so now going down the road, it can't swivel. Can we go camp, can we go camp in the camp? Yeah, you know, my TV, the one I had, I never really used much. Uh, but, you know, you never know if you get like a rainy weekend where there's nothing to do, you're stuck in here. It's nice to have something to watch if you're bored. Uh, but with this, it does have the antenna on the roof, so we just have to go into the settings here and go down all settings, channel probably, and we'll do a channel scan. TV is a little different. Channel tuning and yep, auto tuning. Start. So there we go. So now it's going to go through and use that TV antenna on the roof to gain all your local TV channels. So it'll search for them. And then up here you've got your prep for your 5G gateway. So that's tied into that WineGuard 360 TV antenna that's on the roof. And if you decide to get the router, this little plate unscrews, the router screws up, it uses the TV antenna on the roof to get that 5G internet signal. And then that box on the ceiling here would act as a router. So you'd, it's like a hotspot. Anywhere you take the trailer, you'd have internet. So if you decide to get that, you use them here. Yeah, they, they work really good though, compared to like a cell phone. It does get better signal because it's boosted, it's up on the roof. So if you decide to get it, it is a nice thing to have. And then uh, right here, you've got your smoke detector. So standard nine volt battery in this. So just you know, be aware you will have to replace that of course. You know, eventually. We actually then, got rechargeables at home. You got your wireless phone charger. You push down, pull this up all the way and you got two 110 outlets that's on that gfi breaker there so just be aware if you plug something in here and it's not working it might have been this that popped if right. not a breaker popped and then they give you uh, standard usb and then usb c like quick charging to pop it down it's just that red button do you know how many watts the usb c is i don't it's it okay. say on there yeah i'm not sure i know it's a fast charger but i don't know what the wattage is on that are you familiar with how this makes a bed have you seen that yet we haven't actually seen yeah, it. Nothing. Pretty easy. Um, so I, this, I, you just gotta grab the table, lift up. Sometimes that pole will fall, sometimes it'll stay where it's at, kind of has a mind of its own. I usually just lay this on the floor. You can see you got these blocks here, these black blocks, and then it's got the Velcro stapled on here. So really you just gotta line it up. It's a little awkward, but you'll get the hang of it. Just line up one of those blocks. This front one lined up. Just like so. Oh, you just need that. Yeah, these cushions just on velcro here. You got your bed. So with this, you can travel with it up or down. It doesn't matter. It's bigger than Some people like to travel with it down because then you could load storage totes on it, whatever, as you travel. You it's got storage under idea. there, and then you get your drawers here. Because the wheel well's right there too, right? Yeah. So that'd be right over the axle. The slide here's on its own. So that pretty much reverse procedure to put it up. Just put these cushions back. I don't know. But yeah, this one's screwed down. And there might be some wiring there. There might be storage. I'm not sure. A lot of the times when they screw it down, it means they don't want you to use it as storage. 
There are drawers on the end anyway. And a side screw down, but there might be something there. It wouldn't hurt to get a drill look because if it's way too space, I would store some stuff there. And you just gotta line these hooks back up somehow. There we go. Is that a good core work, work out there? Yeah, right. It's not a very heavy table. Pretty easy. That's it. Pretty easy. Thermostats on the wall here. So this one's real easy to use. You got your mode button on the bottom. You got your temperature up and down here. Right now it's off and it says it's 70 degrees in here. We can hit the mode button. It lights up the display, but we didn't change anything. It's still off. I can go into fan low. So with fan low, the air conditioner is going to kick on, but we're not cooling. We're just moving air with the fan and low fan speed. So there's low fan. It's just nice for circulating air inside the camper. And if I hit the mode button one more time, we'll go from low to high. Now it's going to jump up to high fan. So we can go past uh, high fan to high cool. So now the compressor should kick on so long as our temperature is below our room temperature. There's your compressor. So now we're cooling. With your AC, this is where it's drawing air in. These are your filters on each side. And it's pushing air in here. And you can move these vents closing however you want to do it. When you want to clean these filters, you just got to press in on these covers here. Pops off. Here's your filter. Kind of like, a, I don't know if you've ever had like a window air conditioner or something in your house, but kind of similar filter. Just pull right out. You can blow them out of the air compressor, or you can even clean them out into the sink, dry them out, pop them back in. But you do want to keep these clean. If these get nasty, obviously this can't breathe very well. It's not going to be cooling very well. It's not going to run very efficiently. Just try to take these off every once in a while. Keep an eye on them. So that's high cool, we can go into low cool, drop down, low cool. And then when I go past low and high, you've got auto. So you've got low auto and high auto, which normally in, uh, with these RV air conditioners, I always recommend to leave it on auto high, because it'll automatically detect what fan speed to run at. You'll always prefer high. It just seems to be the most efficient for these. <laughs> And then if I go past that, that's where you go into heat. So the air conditioner is going to shut off. The furnace should fire right up. There it goes. The furnace is propane, so it uses your propane gas up front, but then it uses the battery on the front to ignite it and blow the fan. So air, air conditioning, you'd have to be plugged into a campsite or plugged into a generator to run that. Uh, where, whereas, a microwave, right? Right. Whereas the furnace, you could run the furnace anywhere. You could be in a parking lot. As long as you have propane, your battery's charged, you're good to run. Uh, it takes a minute or so to ignite and get hot, and it also takes a couple minutes to shut down. So if you go to shut the furnace off and you still hear it running for a minute or so, that's normal. It's got a little cool down cycle and then it'll finally quit. So don't freak out if it's still running. It's got a duct in there too, huh? Yeah, so we got the duct on that side of the cabinet and then one in here. Wall warm. That's nice. That means that uh, if you have to go to the bathroom in the morning, it's yeah, not going to be chilly in there. Yeah. And then we'll kick it off here. And like I said, it takes a couple minutes to <laughs> shut off. Uh, bunk beds. Pretty self explanatory. The other piece to your bike rack up front here. Okay. Bike rack up front. It's the ladder. Here. There's the ladder. This gets you that outside storage as well. Put the bunk up on the outside. From that door, bathroom here. I love this bathroom. You got this awesome new sink. Really cool. So you got your control up here, hot and cold. So you can have it any way you want. Hold that down. You got a light switch in here. Exhaust fan. So with this, it's got a black knob here. You just twist it open. This does have a max air cover on it from the factory, so you can leave this open in the rain. You can leave this open during travel. It lets air out, but doesn't let anything back in because of the vent on the roof. But you got your on and off button here, and for the fan on button, it shows one, two, three, four. So those are your different fan speeds. So every time you press the on button, it's going to adjust the speed. But all it does is suck air out, but it's like an attic fan. So if you crack a couple windows, it's going to draw a breeze through here and cool it down. And this is 12 volt right off the trailer battery. So if you're, again, boondocking or out in the middle of nowhere, it's a nice fan to use. Obviously great for condensation from the shower when you're showering, great for smells from the toilet and stuff like that. So it's nice to have. With the shower, they do give you an on and off on the shower head here to conserve hot water because you only have that six gallon water heater, so it goes pretty quick. So 
take what they call like a Navy style shower, jump it and rinse, you know, shut it off, shampoo, soap up, and then you can turn it back on here and rinse. And you'll we'll probably get out one of those oxygenic heads too. Yeah. I think. And then this also has the shower miser on it. Which you should not use when you're on city water. Yeah, you can. It's just going to fill up your fresh water tank. So they give you the sticker here to tell you to open up your uh, fresh water tank drain underneath so you're not filling up your tank. But yeah, it is an awesome feature. And then down here, you've got your toilet. That is porcelain, which is awesome. Uh, biggest thing with these, always leave some liquid in the bowl at all times. So right now with it being winterized, we've got a little bit of antifreeze in there and that's going to keep that rubber seal wet over time so it doesn't dry out and crack. And it's also going to act as a trap so no smells or gases can seep up from the black tank. Uh, unlike your toilet at home, this has no trap. If I open up Correct. this chute here, you can see straight into the black tank. Uh, so in the summertime, you're always going to want to leave a little bit of water in the bowl, even during travel. It's not going to splash out, make a mess if you leave a little bit in there, but it just keeps that seal wet over the summertime and keeps the smells down in the What's black. What's at the back of the bowl there? This? Yeah. That's where the water sprays out. So, okay. so if I pressed all the way down, it would open the chute. Always use the black tank treatment. So we sell two different kinds. One's a uh, like a liquid and one's a tablet. Uh, but it goes down into the black tank, helps break yeah, the solids, toilet tissue. Watched a bunch of videos on that. It yeah. looks like that liquefied might be the way to go. Yeah. I've used almost all of them. They all work the same to me. It just helps with smell and it's a deodorizer digester. So it's just going to help break down all that toilet tissue and solids and stuff. Biggest thing with the black tank is always let it fill up. Always fill it up with water. The more water and liquid you can have in there, the better. And the less yeah. solids. You got some storage. Here. You want anything in there to, to float. Right. You got your uh, microwave, so pretty standard Magic Chef, works great, these are awesome. And then you got your 12 volt fridge, you got your freezer up top, nice refrigerator nice. on bottom. And they give you your temperature control there for the fridge and freezer, so it's on four right now, it's just kind of in the middle. And they can give you the on and off switch for it here, so if I turn the fridge off, it should be dark inside, no light anymore. So that's your master switch for it. This is your travel lock, so it can't open. You can also use it when you're not using the fridge after storage. Keep the doors open so it doesn't mold and mildew up on you and let oh, it breathe. Uh, but First yeah. time we've heard that mentioned about that. Yeah, it's a 12 volt fridge, which is awesome. So it runs right off the batteries on the trailer. So I mentioned earlier, there's the three ways to charge the battery, either offshore power, off your vehicle or off the solar. And with these 12 volt refrigerators, they, they draw a lot of power when they're initially cooling down, but once they're cold, they don't draw really anything they draw like two amps off the global system so yeah we have a, a icicle that yeah. we used camping last yeah. year um it's got the c-comp compressor yeah and the most it drew was 47 watts wow that's awesome so yeah, these have been a game changer uh, they work great yeah, we they're, ran not it. As, they're not as temperamental with being um, on level as well so if you did get into a campsite where you're a little crooked it's still going to cool down very well down below it's your power converter so breakers and fuses down here so all of your 30 amp breakers on the left, all your 12 volt fuses on the right, everything's labeled on the sticker here on the door real nicely. So with a breaker, if it trips, it'd be real obvious. It'd be the only one out of the loop, just flip it back up. And then with your 12 volt fuses, um, you would have to pull them out and check them. Right. Uh, I very rarely see fuses pop, maybe one a year when I, I do this all day, every day. So it is a rarity, um, but I do recommend getting some blade fuses and bring them with you. Yeah, I got some on the wish li on yeah. Amazon wish list already. Yeah, I just standard blade fuses, so just make sure you got them with you. And this is the auto detect converter. So if you decide to upgrade to lithium ion batteries down the road, this will automatically see that you've done that and charge them appropriately. So it is a nice converter. Yeah, what batteries on? On this, this has some um, interstate 24 series deep cycle, just kind of your standard. Is it a 100 amp hour? 100 amp hour, yeah. And then to the right here, you've got your propane carbon monoxide gas alarm. So if you ever had a gas leak on board, that'll start beeping at you. It is a safety device, take it seriously. Um, you know, if you accidentally bumped your stove or something, you got gas pouring into here, you know, it's going to go off. Uh, also carbon monoxide, if your windows are open, you got a truck nearby with exhaust fumes coming in or a generator running with exhaust fumes coming in, it'll go off for that. So take it seriously, get out of here. Um, they are temperamental with aerosol products. So like hairspray, bug spray, cleaning chemicals. If you're in here spraying some aerosol stuff, it might go off thinking that it's gas. So if you know someone was just in here cleaning, wiping something off and it's beeping, that's all it is. Uh, you can hit the reset button on it. And beep a few times and reset and calm down. I had a customer a couple years ago tell me uh, 
his first camper, his dog was laying on the floor next to it, farted, and it went off. <laughs> so that's how temperamental they are. So just be aware. Oh, he uh, that, gas. That, that, thing will, that thing will also chirp if the battery gets weak on the trailer. So if you if you put this thing in storage, it's sitting next to your house for a couple months, the batteries start to get weak on the trailers from sitting, which is normal, this thing's gonna start chirping. And all it's saying is I need voltage, I need more power. So you'd come in here. Sulfur should help with that though. You'd come in here, you'd wave your hand, you'd see your batteries read low, you'd go, okay, that's all it is. You plug your trailer in. As soon as you give it voltage, that thing's gonna stop chirping. So just know if it it's a it's a low, kind of slow chirp. It's not a fast like alarm, it's a pretty distinct chirp. You'll know what I'm talking about if you ever hear it. You got your light and your fan here over the stove. So with the fan, there is an exhaust vent outside. You have to crack open for this to breathe properly. I'll show you that when we go outside. So you do have to open that out there if you want to use that. And they do give you the uh, slots here for knives. So you can put some knives in there. But this folds up. You got your lights on it, you can turn on. These are your three burner knobs for the top stove. All we have to do is turn it to high, but you do have to press it in. Over here, we your igniter. Let it warm up for a second. There we go. These are awesome. Basically, every time you turn this clockwise, it's just sparking everywhere. This doesn't matter where it's facing. If you're OCD like me, you can always bring it back to center. But <laughs> oven down here does share that same igniter. So with the oven, it's a little different. We have to turn it to pilot. There's a little pilot flame on the knob, but you have to press and hold this in for about 10 or 15 seconds. It takes a while for the propane to get down to that igniter way down in there. So it's kind of a waiting game. Just sit here and hold this down. And I found you can either bend over and look down here as you turn the igniter to look for that pilot, or you can use the door to your advantage because it's got the reflection. So now I can see right down into the bottom of the oven and I'm not bending over. And I'm just going to come over here and the first try it lit right up. I've got a little blue pilot flame way down in the bottom of the oven down there. So once we have that going, now I can adjust my temperature and it should light the rest of the way. It's starting to preheat, here it goes. Now when you shut the oven off, it blows that pilot out. So you don't have to worry about that running anymore. So you do have to relight that pilot every time you light the oven. And then you got your oven light as well. So nice big oven for a trailer this size. Yeah, so many of them don't even have an oven. Exactly. My favorite feature right here, gotta have that. Got some storage down below. This is your cold air return for the furnace, so that's where it's sucking air in for the heat. They give you a little sponge holder there, and then you get your drawer here. Well, that's about it inside. Solar charge controllers here, so you got that big 200 or 250 watt panel. I'm not sure what size it is up on the roof. It's supposed to be 200, I think. 200 watt, yep. So it's uh, anytime this is sitting out in sunlight. Right now it's just showing the voltage yep. of the battery. Yep, sunlight's hitting that solar panel. The the charge from that panel is coming down to this charge controller, which is then regulating the charge to the trailer battery so it doesn't overcharge and boil them out. That's all it's doing is just keeping that charge regulated. Uh, there's nothing you have to do with that panel. It just shows you the, the specs of the charge and the battery conditions. Uh, there's no on or off for it. It's always charging to its job as long as it's outside. So you can walk around outside, show you everything out there. How many YouTube videos have you watched on this thing? A lot. <laughs> This and all the, all the competitors, the Rubicon, the, oh, yeah. the uh, Jayco, the Wolf Pups. I, I like the Geos, so I've been here, this is like my 12th year, I think, and we've been selling these for at least six or seven, and that's a great product. Mm -hmm. Really, really, rarely see any issues with them. They're well built. They give you a lot of cool features, the solar, the inverter, 12 volt fridge, a lot of cool stuff on it. So you got one of your outside speakers. This is controlled through that TV. So your TV controls the outside sound. There's a button on the TV remote for zone B, which is the outside zone. So you can adjust the volume for that. Your TV also acts as your Bluetooth stereo and your FM radio. So if you go through the inputs on the TV, it'll show you it's a, for music and stuff if you want to listen to music out here. And they do give you, this is that vent for your stove. So there's two little plastic tabs you can push up and out on. So now this can breathe. I can get my hand up in there. When you're not using it, you just kind of get in there and press it shut. And now bees and bugs and stuff can't fly up into your stove vent and make a nest up there. Furnace exhaust, so the hot air won't come out of here when the furnace is running, and this metal gets hot, so don't touch this when the furnace is on. And they give you power outside. You want to plug something in outside. This is tied into that GFI inside, though. So again, be aware. If you plug something in, it ain't working. Check that GFI. 
This is where your griddle's gonna sit. So your griddle's up in your storage compartment that comes with the griddle and the table. Propane quick connect hose connects right here. There is a gas bell to turn that on and off and that feeds off your main tanks up front. And then you've got your rear stabilizer jacks. Let's just take a three quarter inch socket. It does come with the crank up front if you wanna do it by hand. Yeah, I've already got one for, dr for the drill. Yeah, it actually came today. <laughs> you are prepped for a backup camera. So it's set up for the Furion bracket. We do sell a couple other brands here that work on that bracket. So if you guys- Yeah, I got a Halo View. Okay, it. yeah, it should work. So it's got the power waiting for it behind that bracket. You just gotta mount it up and plug it in. And then right here, you got your black tank flush. So when you're dumping your sewage tank, if they have a water hose at the dump station, you can hook it up, run that for a minute or two, flush out the black tank, clean off the sensors in the tank. Do give you your black gray valve down here for your sewage. So when you get to the dump station, you're ready to dump the tanks. These valves would normally be closed. Pull your cap off here. Put your sewer hose on it. Attaches the same way as the cap does. So it just screws right on there, put it in the hole in the ground, and then you're gonna pull your black valve out. All your sewage runs out, it takes a minute or so, gravity does it all. Once that's done flowing, then you'd be able to hook up the black tank flush hose and flush out that black tank for a minute or so until it starts running clear. Then you can close up your black valve, shut off your black tank flush, and pull your gray valve, and that'll rinse out your sewer hose from all that crud that just went through it. You do have the slide topper on top of the slide, which is nice, so it's gonna prevent you know, leaves and sticks and debris from piling up on top of the slide roof, so really nothing you have to worry about there. Um, and then these are your slide motor gears for each side of the slide box. What's this right here? That's a bump stop for this door. Ah, okay. So when you open this door, it swings up, and that way you can't hit the fiberglass. I hadn't noticed it before. This is our shop power cord, but yours is in your bag inside here in this compartment. Right here is your water heater. You got your door that swings down here. Right here is your anode rod. So this is your drain plug slash anode rod for the water heater. This is sacrificial. It eats away over time. So in a couple seasons, this will be nothing but a thin wire left. Uh, you'll have to get a new one. They're about 20 bucks. So this just threads right into here. Wish that's how home water heaters work. Yeah, right. This just threads right into there. It is a one and one sixteenth socket. So it's a big socket. Most people don't have one at home. I had to go buy one. Uh, so just remember, if you plan on taking it in and out yourself, get a big socket for it. Um, yeah, that just threads into there. So again, if you're going to dewinterize, you hook up to city water, which is right here, or put water in your tank and run the pump. But either way, you're just trying to get water into the system to flush out all that antifreeze. Run all your taps, even come out here and run this outside shower, make sure there's water coming out of this. Once you've confirmed you've got water everywhere, then you'd have to reach under that drawer I showed you and flip the valves on the back of the water heater. That's gonna allow water to start filling this. So you'd have to put the drain plug in here, thread, tighten that up. You don't have to tighten it up all the way, just snug it up, it's not gonna leak. Once you got that snugged up and in, this will start filling with water. It's a six gallon cylindrical tank here, so it's gonna start filling with water. But as it's filling with water, you have to open up this pressure relief valve to burp the air out as it's filling. There's nowhere for all that trapped air to go. So you're gonna hear air hissing out of this valve as it's filling. Once water starts coming out of this valve, that tells you the tank is full. You shut this valve and now you're ready to camp for the summer. And then kind of reverse procedure in the fall. First thing you do is come out, relieve the water pressure on the system so you don't see any water dripping out of here. That tells you you're relieved all the pressure. Then you can take your socket, pull this drain plug out, six gallons of water is gonna come pouring out of that hole right there and you just drain it all out on the ground. And you go inside the trailer, reach in, turn those two bypass valves for the water heater back there, and then flip that water pump valve. And now you hook up a hose to this antifreeze inlet right here. Just set a little jug RV antifreeze on the ground, run your hose into it, go inside, turn your pump on. It's gonna suck that antifreeze right into the system and you just run all your taps till you see pink and you're done. Mm -hmm. So the big thing is to just bypass this, leave it open and dry for the winter. You don't want to put any antifreeze in here. It's a huge waste of antifreeze. There's no need to do it. That's why you just bypass it and, and eliminate it from the system and empty it. And then just put antifreeze through the lines and you're done. You don't really need to put any antifreeze in the holding tanks. Just leave those dry and empty for the winter time. Pretty easy. If you don't feel comfortable winterizing it or dewinterizing it, you can always bring it in here and make an appointment. Uh, we do uh, winterizations in like the end of October, two weekends. Or you could just whip it in here on a Saturday. We run out, winterize it, and off you go. You don't have to mess with it. But it's not too bad. Yeah, I'm sure there's plenty of YouTube videos out there on how to winterize one of these already. This is where you fill your fresh water tank. So it's a gravity fill. You just shove your hose in there. Once it's full, it's gonna start spewing back out at you. 
anatomy have power cord attaches here. So in here is your power cord, this big black bag. They give you your table for outside next to the griddle. One of my favorite things they give you, the forest oh, spatula. Actually, you get special. With the bottle opener on the other end. The propane hose for the griddle. They do give you the wheel for up front here. So if you want to take that pad off and throw a wheel on, you can if you have a flat driveway. Put the round up. Oh, let's see, up here we have the outside shower. So with that, there is a hose that comes with it in that bag. It's just a quick connect hose and they give you hot and cold water for your outside shower spray head area. Docking light switch does the LED strip up front here. Yeah, and then just city water antifreeze inlet. With the city water inlet, I do recommend a water pressure regulator for this. Okay. They make the nice elbow one, the 90 degree one. That's the one I'd recommend, just that way your hose Yeah, what's the uh, suggested uh, pressure? Um, well, they make a low pressure regulator and a high pressure for showers. But they I have think, adjustable ones too? I think so. I think you just want to stay under 100. Is, under 100? Yeah, is usually the rule of thumb. Yeah, because a lot of people on the, in the videos, they said there's a 40. Yeah, I mean, way, yeah. I was just I one, wondering what it can take. Like 70 to 90, I don't know. I think these are, the plumbing on these usually like 100 is max. You want to throw at it and you're going to start spraying leaks. You got your uh, battery box up front here. And then in between the battery box and the propane box is your battery disconnect switch. Just up a little bit. If you look right here is your battery disconnect switch. So if you're going to put the trailer right in storage there. and you don't want the batteries to die, you want to just completely cut them off. You can come over here and turn that switch off. Now the batteries are that, off. That cuts it from the solar too though, right? Yep. It kills everything and then when you come back two months later to use the trailer you shouldn't be dealing with dead batteries they should be just from left off from where you left them you can get to your propane tank pulling this all the way off this does have the auto changeover regulator on it so when one tank empties it'll automatically start feeding off the other tank so long as it's turned on you can also flip it so we're now i'm feeding off this tank first then going to this one just don't leave it in the middle because it'll feed off both tanks at the same time and it can freeze this and damage it. So you want it either facing that way or facing this way, one or the other. When it's green, it's got gas. When it's red, it's off or empty. Okay. So that's really the only gauge you have for them. And you got your up and down. So you give you a nice light up front here as well. So they do give you a small solar hook up here. So if you want to get a small solar panel. We actually have a couple already. Oh, there you go. Rated for I think 20 amps. Uh, controller too. Depends on the amp. Because I think that this wires right to the battery. Is, yeah. yeah. Yep. Driddles in the box. Yeah, yeah. There you go. Um, I got one on the wish list already. It's a uh, 20 amp EPT. Okay. So, so it's a little one. So it, it, it comes with uh, SAE. Yeah. So that'd be cool. The steps, the biggest thing with the steps, you just want to make sure the door is open all the way. Lift up on the step. Latches into place there. Kind of can shut the door for travel. It's a pull your grab handle, so that's what it looks like going down the road. Steps stay clean during travel, which is awesome. You get to where you're going. The big thing just open the door all the way again. Pull your blue lever here, walk them down. And it will give you these latches here where you can adjust your leg. Too. So, depending on the on. Obviously, you want it to be nice and level. So, that's, that's the light thing. Right at it. So you just want to make sure they're nice and sturdy, they're not wobbling on you. The other thing you want to look at is this black step sill. You want to make sure it's somewhat level with the silver door sill below it. So if I overextend these feet, it's going to sit like that. And now the door's going to buy when it tries to shut. So it's really the only thing you got to look for. And they do sell um, handles. That bolt on there, so like an extended handle you could get for it. The screen door has got the screen shot on it, which is like a bungee cord, and automatically shuts it behind you so it keep the bugs out. Cool. You can slide this over here, keep the keep the mosquitoes out, and still use it from either side. You got your deadbolt switch in size. So you got your handle lock and your deadbolt for your outside lock. So. With the handle, it's just locking the handle, whereas the deadbolt, you can operate from inside, actually unlock it, lock it. No mode bars are on. So they're acting as giant springs. They're distributing the trailer frame weight with the vehicle frame. So if the vehicle's not squatting at all in the back, you can see the Explorer sitting nice and level, trailer sitting nice and level. So that's what it's doing there. And then when you're turning, there's so much downforce and friction from this bar on that L bracket and that's your built-in friction sway control, so the trailer's not going to sway behind you when you get passed by a semi or high winds, stuff like that. It's a really nice hitch. 
So in order to get the bars off, so let's pretend like you guys just backed into your driveway at home, you gotta take it all apart. You start lowering the jack down. I do recommend a border block underneath it. Mm -hmm. The taller the better, the less work the jack has to do. It's gonna start raising the truck and trailer up in the air. And the higher you go, the better it's gonna be. Because you're just taking the weight off of these bars right now. All right. You can see now it just pulls right off. And you pop your pin out here, pull your bar out. You'll be able to put this in your storage compartment, wherever you want to store it, or in your garage at home, wherever you plan on putting it. You would do the same thing on the other side. Take that bar off, take it, take the pin out, take it off. And then all you'd have to do next is lower this back down to the ground because mm -hmm. when it's raised up in the air like this, this coupler is not going to want to slide back and release off the ball because right. it's bound up. So then you lower it down, slide that coupler back, then raise it up, it'll come off the ball, and then you'd be able to drive the vehicle forward. Obviously, you can attach your chains and your safety cable. And then to put the bars back on, first thing you do is couple the ball on the trailer, lock it, and raise the truck and trailer way up in the air. The higher, the better, so you can load your bars on. Raise it up here. Now, the bars, it really doesn't matter. There's no left or right or anything like that. Now they're not side specific. And you're just gonna push it over. Now let's say you're on a hill or something, you've got the trailer and truck raised way, uh, raised way up and this still won't clear this bracket. They do give you a tool, do this leverage tool right here. So you'll be able to come up, used on his. Yeah, come up underneath and then you'd be able to use the tool you know, to your advantage and give it some leverage so it'll pop it into place. You always use your foot too to kind of help kick it on the bracket. And this L bracket always goes over the bar like so. And then you got your pin goes to front to back like so. Now when I lower it back down, that's putting all the trailer weight onto those bars. So you'll see once it's all the way down, you cannot move that bar at all, all that weight's on it. Fairly easy hitch, but the biggest principle is raising it way up in the air. Yep. Whether you're putting the bars on or taking them off. But you have to have it lowered and level for this to slide back. It won't do it when it's raised up in the air. Now you are gonna get some noise out of this hitch when you turn, because these bars are sliding back and forth when you make turns. Uh, so you're going to hear some groaning and moaning behind the truck that's normal. They think this one's actually kind of quiet. Yeah, so most of the newer ones are. But just be aware. Yeah. You know, people get freaked out first time pulling out of here. What is that? You know? <laughs> yeah, and then brake controller plugs right in. Now the biggest thing you always want to look for when you plug this guy in, there's a blinking light up in here that blinks to tell you it's got power. With your Ford, um, it has to be running for this to be powered. So right now there's no light on it, but when I fired it up earlier, it did light up is a good sign tells me it's got 12 volt power there and then your chains you always want to cross once so right now i've got them just cross once right here they're always stronger stronger when they're crossed once versus ran parallel if it did land on the chains it would snap them and then your breakaway cable here this is just for your electronic uh, brakes god forbid somehow this got detached going down the road mm -hmm. and the trailer flew past you this would yank out locking up the trailer brake so that it would stop safely behind you instead of rolling past you going down the road if an accident happened or something so like i said some freak thing happened where it got detached subscribe now